The intention of this video is to provide medical personnel with an overview of the use of the anesthesia device for long-term ventilation. Medical personnel should be instructed on the use of the medical device and get familiarized with the functionalities of Draeger anesthesia devices. Make sure an experienced user, like for example an anesthesiologist, is available for you always, 24-7. In case of any problem, call for help at an early stage. Before connecting the patient, verify for the readiness of the systems and accessories. More details on how to do that will be explained later on this video. A separated external manual breathing bag should always be in the workplace. This is to secure patient ventilation in the case of any failure. For non-invasive ventilation, an ICU mechanical ventilator or a non-invasive ventilator should be preferred. Remove from the anesthesia device all the vaporizer. The minimum quantity of anesthetic agent might trigger malignant hyperthermia on the patient or on the medical staff. To do so, press the button and turn the dial to the T position for transport. Then turn the lever. Be aware that the vaporizer is heavy. Make sure nitrous oxide is not supplied to the anesthesia device. Disconnect the nitrous oxide hose from the source. Make sure you first disconnect from the source and then you disconnect from the back of the anesthesia device. Use the manual spontaneous mode only after you have been instructed on its use. It is not recommended to use the external fresh gas outlet neither the post mode, which is available on our Atlan and Persois A500 device, neither the monitoring mode. Keep in mind that in volume control ventilation modes, leakages are not automatically compensated. Therefore, pressure control ventilation modes are preferred. In the situation of a deficit of fresh gas flow, identified by an empty manual breathing bag, you have to act immediately. You should identify and correct the leakages, and you should increase the fresh gas flow. Additionally, you can deattach the manual breathing bag to allow ambient air to be drowned inside of the anesthesia device. Keep in mind that FiO2 measurement will be in between the set percentage of oxygen in the fresh gas flow and 21 percentage of oxygen in ambient air. If possible, always stay in the vicinity of the anesthesia device. Remember the design of the alarm management of the device has been done so. The user is always in the proximity of it. When this is not possible, Keep in mind that the maximum level of volume of the alarms has to be set. To do so, go to the configuration button, confirm the alarm volume, and use the rotary knob to take it to the higher level. Please remember, the alarms on the display will be deleted automatically once the condition triggering the alarm has disappeared. To verify on the alarms that have occurred in the non-presence of the user, you can always go to the logbook and verify them directly in there. It is recommended to check on the accessories at least every 12 hours. Soda line canister, gas measurement water trap, respiratory breathing circuits, and patient filter. To verify on the condition of the soda line, visually monitor that no more than two thirds of its content has turned into color purple and inspiratory CO2 has not gone above a level of five milliliters of mercury. If that is not the case, be prepared to exchange the soda line. When soda line exchange is required, 
press the button to release the cartridge. Take it out, take the new cartridge and remove the red cap, insert the new cartridge, and lock it back on its place. To check on the condition of the gas measurement water trap, visually monitor that no more of half of its content is full. Otherwise, you have to drain it. To do so, you have to first disconnect the sample line, then you detach from the port the water trap, and you use a standard series to drain it. You place it on the lower color port and you drain its content. You might repeat the process if you still have some water on the trap. After that, you place the empty water trap back on the port and tightly reconnect the sample line. Keep in mind that you have to regularly check on the condensed water on the breathing hose system. The recommendation is to use breathing hose system with water traps, because in that case, you can safely drain the water and avoid leakages on the patient side. To do so, just turn the water trap and drain it. Then you put it back on its place. Keep in mind that you also have to regularly verify on the patient filter. You have to look for humidity or a sock filter. In that case, you have to exchange it. Please remember, only mechanical filters should be used, if possible, in combination with passive humidification by using a filter with HME, the closest possible to the patient in the system. Keep in mind, the hospital guideline should always be followed in regards to infection prevention. Keep in mind that the sample line should always be tightly connected to the patient filter and to the gas measurement water trap because the measurement of the FiO2 and CO2 is performed by this system. You have to constantly visually monitor the values of the FiO2 and CO2. Because of the rebreathing system, the measured values might differ slightly from the set ones. Be aware that the manual breathing bath should be full and evenly filled and that it will be moving in synchronization with the ventilation. Please remember, drug nebulization and aerosol therapy is not recommendable for anesthesia devices. Keep in mind the anesthesia device should be tested every 24 hours, but in case of long-term ventilation, it is allowed to be tested every 72 hours. Details on how to perform the cell test will be explained in a further video.